Gene Autry making another raid on your time with his Radio Riders, broadcasting from Radio Ranch. We're about to bust right into your homes with some real ranch music and singing. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're going to give you some real ranch music and singing. A long, long time ago, as all you folks should know, Uncle Noah built himself an ark for 40 days and nights. The rain was sure a fright, and the animals nearly tore his ark apart. The duck went quack, the cow went hoo, the doodle The old tom catcher raised an awful row. The little pig squealed, the billy goat bang. The bull frog said, biggest rain we've had. Uncle Noah's ark's a madhouse now. The horses and cattle land south of the air. Even the long-eared jacket was there. Quack, they all said who? Whoop! Oh, there, Uncle Noah's ark. At last the sun did shine, to the window bright and fine, and Uncle Noah thought it was time to land. He couldn't open the door, got his hammer on the shore, and the animals roared and growled to beat the band. The duck went crack, cow went whoop, Uncle Doodle Doo. The old Tom got you raised an awful row. The little pig squealed, the billy goat bounced, the bullfrog said, Take it rain we've had. Uncle Noah's ark's a madhouse now. The horses and cattle and the fowls of the air. Even the long-eared jacket was there. Quack! Yeah. 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 All were there and up the lower guard. We're now turning the microphone over to Frankie and Betsy Baxter, President and Vice President of the National Thunder Riders Club. You're on the air, kids. It's all yours. First, I want to ask all of you to... First, I want to... Pardon the static, folks. First, I want to ask all of you to join our National Thunder Riders Club so you can come out here to our vacation camp and see a radio broadcast put on like it should be. Riding, roping, real horses, real guns, real cowboys... All you boys. And the girls, too. We don't want any girls. We do, too. Now, in reply to your letters, boys and girls, as to how we came to select the name Thunder Riders for our club. What well, day, Frankie? I were having a horse race on the desert. We were riding like the wind, just having a lot of fun. When all of a sudden, we heard something that sounded like a roll of thunder. It's going to rain. Rain nothing. Well, there isn't a cloud in the sky. That's from Thunder Valley. I heard it once before. The Thunder Riders!
Club, the Thunder Riders. The legend is a reality to Betsy and me. And if we ever see those riders again, we'll sure tell you more about them. Thank you, Frankie and Betsy. Thank you. And remember all you kids that can't come out to the ranch. You can form a Thunder Riders Club in your own town and ride with us every afternoon. Just send in your name and we'll send you a pattern so that your mother can make you a costume. Everybody ready? You. Yep. Let me remind you that when we left our radio show yesterday, the settler's wife was cowering in the corner of her log cabin, while her heroic husband, willing to give his life for those he loved, suffered terrific torture. You remember he had substituted his arm for the wooden bar across the door, which the bandits outside were trying to batter in. Already the door is beginning to shatter under their blows, and it seems but a moment until his tired, bruised arm will break. And now for the Thunder Riders. Are you all set, Eddie? Here they come! Will the Thunder Riders get there in time? And that, folks, you will learn when you tune in tomorrow. Good afternoon. Radio Rank now signing off. Say, is our ranch becoming popular? And all on account of your broadcast. Why, our guests are coming on trains and horses and an automobile. And now, they're arriving by airplane. You said that ranch was deserted. It's deserted, all right. What about the fortune and radium you promised us? You'll get your radium. Gentlemen, I am firmly convinced that this is the site of the buried city of Mew. And with proper excavation, we'll find more than radium. We'll find secrets that have been lost to the world for thousands of years. As official greeters, we'd better get out and meet them. Welcome to Radio Ranch, gentlemen. <laughs> Quite a surprise to see a plane around here. The world is full of surprises. Uh, Beetson is my name, Professor Beetson. I'm Gene Autry. Do you think that we might secure accommodations? Sure, we can take care of you. This way, gentlemen, please. Nobody saw you come up here. I don't want my secret laboratory discovered. I sneaked away. So you're the one that took that caliber cathode cyclometer tube that the radio engineer was looking for. Shh. This is scientifically important to me. Look here, sis. This shows you exactly how to make a direction finder. And I just made one. What's a direction finder? Well, when you hear something on the radio, this will tell you exactly what direction it's coming from. Look, I'll show you. That is, I'll show you if I made this thing right. See? It's pointing two degrees west of north. That means the music's coming from San Francisco. There's those funny signals again. Frankie, look! The direction finder is standing on its head! Your time. They seem to stand for anything. Okay. You know those funny signals I've been getting for the last two weeks? Yeah. Well, I got them again tonight. And my direction finder says they're coming from straight down. Say, do you suppose there's anything to any of those books that Frankie's been reading about a world underground with people and cities and everything? <laughs> Why, of course there's something to them. 
Let's go see those scientists that came today. Maybe they can tell us something about it. Maybe they can. But the signals were coming from the center of the Earth. And I wanted you to explain it to me, Professor. I see that you have a perfect understanding of radio beams. You probably encountered some unusual internal interference. Uh, undoubtedly magnetic static. Yes, but, but the signal sounded like human signals. Static, just static. However, I'll give the matter some thought and uh, look into it further a little later. Did you ever see anything like this? Peculiar little fellow, isn't it? Ah, an interesting example of antediluvian Americana. Where did you get it? Found it at the head of Thunder Valley. Could you lead my colleagues to the spot? Gladly. We'll appreciate it very much. But we'll have to get an early start. I have a broadcast at 2 o'clock, and if we'll miss it, we'll lose our contract. We'll say 8 o'clock. Good. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Good night. Professor. Good night. You heard everything? Autry's radio program and his singing make this ranch popular. Without him, there would be nothing here to interest anyone, and the place would soon become deserted. And we could go on with our secret explorations without anyone to molest us. Exactly. Tomorrow morning, when he leads Cooper and Saunders to the spot where he found that idol, your job is to see that he doesn't come back. be a Moranian. Alive? Impossible. I tell you it is. Come on, I found a Muranian. He's gone. I see that. Here's the proof. And there's the bullet hole. You perforated his oxygen tank. Evidently, they can't function on the air we breathe. This is undoubtedly a breathing apparatus that permits the Muranians to live at ground level. And the eyepieces are colored against actinic rays. It proves that the Moranians lived underground. Probably have since the first ice age, 100,000 years ago. He must have had confederates who helped him escape.
we'll gain some strength when we get down to the 20,000 foot level. Correctly. Yes, Your Majesty. Her Majesty is waiting. I know. Clear the way. Stand fast for the Queen's Guard. men in our garden of life. But it's never happened before, and it shall never happen again. No, Your Imperial Majesty. It has never happened before, and it shall never happen again. Queen Guard! We welcome your return. Your Imperial Majesty, I have to report... Silence! You are not here to report. I have seen everything. You are here to be commended for your loyalty and skill in having safely returned with your wounded comrade without once having been seen by a serviceman. I do so commend you. Conduct him to the radium reviving chamber. insane material because you are unable to find the garden of life? future of all my subjects are in jeopardy because these inquisitive surface people seem bent upon discovery of our empire. What's your message? As you already know, they have actually invaded the Garden of Life. They will soon return to investigate further. I shall order the Royal Guard to rid Murania of these intruders. For my part, I should send to the Garden of Life and there capture them when they return. No. The entrance to the Garden of Life must be destroyed. They must never be able to find it again. Yes, Your Imperial Majesty. 
proceed at once to the Garden of Life and destroy the entrance so that no surface man may ever find it again. Yes, Your Majesty. Alert! Do you hereby swear to abide by all the rules and regulations of the National Thunder Riders Club? I do. You are now a full-fledged member. Be seated. We will now continue with our regular business. The secretary will read the minutes of the last meeting. Meeting called to order at 4 o'clock. Bill reported his committee couldn't find any motto for our club. Bub thought it would be better to have a banquet than a motto. Meeting was adjourned because everybody got hungry. Has anyone any suggestions for the motto of our club? All for one and one for all. To the rescue is mine. No more school. Do a good turn, Dave. Thank you, Dale. Your suggestion is a good one. But that's the Boy Scouts motto. And we must have one of our own. Listen. There's that thunder sound. That's the same sound that we heard the day we saw the thunder riders. Maybe they're riding again. Meeting adjourned. Isn't that Gene's horse? Something must have happened to him. Maybe the real Thunder Riders got him. To the rescue! That's our motto. To the rescue! To the rescue! Here. All you kids break up into parties of two. We'll search this whole country. I don't all go the same way. Bet you and I'll ride up toward Thunder Valley. Look, a smoke signal. It must be Jean. Canteen, quick! Thanks. You feel better now? Sure, I'm all right. Boy, you sure had a narrow escape. Yeah. Say, we got a broadcast at 2 o'clock. If we miss it, we lose our contract. And that means we'll lose Radio Ranch. We'll have to ride like the Dickens. You and Betsy ride double. to our entire situation. Explain yourself, Argo. If we can capture Gene Autry, Radio Ranch would soon become deserted, and the entrance to our underground kingdom would forever remain undiscovered. We can never allow Murania to become desecrated by the presence of surface people. Our lives are serene, our minds are superior, our accomplishments greater. Gene Autry must be captured. Get the captain of the Thunder Riders on the wireless telephone. Captain of the Thunder Guards reporting. Gene Autry approaches Thunder Valley. Captured him. Yes, Your Imperial Majesty. Thunder Guards, forward! 